CoolersOnSale.com here for a block ice versus cubed ice versus ice pack challenge. And for those that are like me at home, please do not scrub to the end of the video looking for results. This is the one video we've done that I believe needs more context than most. And as we get into this video, you'll understand why I'm saying that. So as you can see in front of me, we have three identical coolers. These are all Engel 60 quart coolers, and we will be testing 15 pounds each of each ice type. So 15 pounds of block ice, 15 pounds of cube ice, and 15 pounds of ice pack here on the end. As you're seeing right now, we have two jugs of tap water at roughly seven and a half pounds each. So 15 pounds total of straight tap water. Here in the middle, we have cubed ice. It is a 16 pound bag that we got from Publix. We took a pound of it out, weighed it out. And one caveat is that we did buy this in advance and put it in our deep freezer so that the cubed ice was, ex was exposed to the exact same temperatures as our tap water, as well as our ice packs here on the end. Here on the end, three identical angle 32 degree phase change ice packs, a little less than five pounds each. So a little less than 15 pounds on the ice packs, but nonetheless, as close to 15 pounds as we could get for block ice, cubed ice and ice pack. Please also take note of where I placed that thermometer up and away in that wire basket, up and away from the ice source in the wire basket. That will become more important as we start to take a look at the actual results from the thermometer. As you're seeing right now, the test only lasted two, two and a half days before we ran out of ice. And those that would take the results for face value would say, well, cubed ice one, our block ice one, I'm going to use only block ice, but, but don't do that. And again, when we take a look at the actual export of data from the thermometer, you'll see why. But nonetheless, you can see I actually cut the uh, the jug open so that it would reveal what was left of that block ice. It was a ball of ice uh, yesterday, and then by this morning, it had completely exhausted. So the block ice, in fact, when we look at physical ice and how long that lasted, it was about an extra half a day over the cubed ice as well as the ice packs. But again, why I say you can't take this on face value is when you take a look at the results of the export, which is the beautiful thing about these Wi-Fi thermometers is I can literally export every data point and then we marry them up. So you can see all three different types of ice, right? The block ice, the cube ice and the ice packs and how it changed uh, temperatures over time. And really what I'm wanting to zoom in on, and I've actually exported a, a, a block of data so that you can really see when the temperature of the ice packs and ice actually increase all together. And there's one point on the graph that I'll try to do my best to splice that in where you see almost they, they, they all move in lockstep and come to a same point. And at that point, it's like 62 degrees. And in my opinion, where we place the thermometer, and again, why I did that is if you have ground beef or hot dogs or whatever it is, at that point, in my opinion, 62, 62 degrees, the cooler and the ice or ice packs are not doing their job at that point, right? So unless you're chilling only beverages, then maybe block ice makes sense. But if you have something like meat or something that can't get wet, then I think at the end of the day, they all performed almost identical. And that data from the Wi-Fi thermometers really confirms that, right? They all come together at that exact same point. And at that point, you're talking 62 degrees. And you can see the graph in exactly what I talked about, that the uh, block ice did maintain ice the longest. And you can see that it actually kept the uh, internal temperature of the cooler, the lowest, the longest, but you're still talking in the 60s. You'll also see in the graph that the cubed ice here in front of me kept the cooler the lowest, the longest, right? Until we started to really hit that point where they all climbed uh, together. And then last but not least is the the angle, which was somewhere in between in terms of temperature. But again, they all rose together, right? So a couple things I want to go over. Number one, I wish there were better than convoluted results. But at the end of the day, the ice, the block ice, the cubed ice, and the ice packs performed very similarly. But if you take it on face value, no doubt, I'm not going to argue it whatsoever that the block ice definitely outlasted uh, the others. The caveat being, again, I think it's only applicable if you are chilling drinks or something that can't get wet, because as you see, uh, definitely have water in the block ice. And then of course, with the cubed ice, uh, a no, no brainer there. So if you're chilling just drinks and you're not overly concerned with uh, what the temperature, you're not maintaining meat, then sure, block ice makes sense. But I will say there is a caveat that 
uh, you see how much room it takes up. Now, to be fair, I think you could have probably got away with one jug. It just didn't weigh enough for us, which is why we use two jugs. Now you're basically wasting a third of your cooler space uh, with block ice. So keep that in mind as well, that you got to use quite a bit of space when you get into that block ice and even cubed ice, right? Yes, it lays flat and yes, you can get it around your drinks, but then keep in mind, you're going to have that water accumulation as well. Knowing that they all perform roughly the same, pick what's going to work for you. In a perfect world, my opinion is to use ice packs because you buy them once, you refreeze them, you use them as much as possible, and they're the lowest profile, right? So they take up as least amount of space as possible, and there's no uh, mess, right? There's no water so that you keep bread or whatever in there. But at the end of the day, if you're going camping and you just grab a bag of ice, you're going fishing or whatever, they're all going to perform about the same. So you really need to pick what works best for you. I really hope this video has been helpful, guys. I spent a lot of time in trying to get into the nitty gritty of the data. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up. It's what helps us to keep going. And please drop us a comment with the next video we'd like to see. We do these videos for you. We test the things you guys wanna see. So please drop us a comment with what you guys would like to see next. And we'll be back next time with another video review.